catch me, I'll be moving fast Call me a shooting star Let them know who you are Flying up in a bar Wish on a star Time to show them who's in charge Call me a shooting star Hello, BTC. This is your boy DJ Barbecue with another special guest today, and that special guest is professionally wrestler superstar, time traveler himself, DeLorean Diggs. DeLorean Diggs, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Uh, once again, thank you for being on the show. Um, for the viewers and the listeners that are out there, let's get down to it. Let's hear what attracted you to professional wrestling. Oh, man. The... The best way I can explain this is basically how I kind of remember me watching it into like all the stuff that I remember. So around the time I was about maybe two years old or everything like that, and um, I'm j I'm at my uh, grandpa's house. Uh, him and my dad was watching uh, professional wrestling. Um, they was watching, I believe at the time, it was Tuesday Night Slam or Thursday Night Titans, one of the two. I can't remember, um, but I remember them just watching it. It was getting into it, you know, uh, and uh, one of the people I remember seeing on the screen, um, you know, was Vern Gagne and all that um, with his promotion up in Minnesota, and I just remember that I just, I was just floored by it. I just, I was just awe-inspired, you know, seeing, like, guys like, you know, Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning and... You know, after that, I was more, I think I was more into it being a two-year-old more than they was. And uh, they was just surprised in Florida I was into it. And uh, so I just remember going up to, uh, like, going straight up to the TV and just pointing out and just say, what's that? Um, Grandpa was like, well, this is called uh, professional wrestling uh, or pro wrestling. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do that when I grow up. Just you wait and see. I'm going to be on TV just like that guy. Um, and around that time, too, Tito Santana was wrestling as well. <laughs> Is there but, any um, uh, in professional the past... wrestlers that you idolized that you that really caught your eye back then when you were watching with your, your grandpa and your dad? Um, one of the people I'm going to say off the top of my head is uh, definitely Kurt, uh, Kurt Handy because that's, like, the first face I remember seeing. Um, but honestly, like, growing up more... Uh, just a spitball a few. I can just say honestly, there was there was a Shawn Michaels. I was a huge, huge Sting guy. Like I loved Sting at WCW. Huh. Um, Two Cold Scorpio was my man. Um, you know, just to name a few. Uh, you know, I also did like uh, The Rock and Austin and the Mick Foley's in the world. But definitely, I can say the people that really inspired me was definitely guys like Two Cold Scorpio, Kurt Henning, and Sting. For sure, that's my top three. What what about those top three that really stuck with you when you saw them on TV? Well, I mean, Two Cold Scorpio, I always considered to be a person that was legit ahead of his time. Um, he was just super, super, super athletic, and like that's like one of the people. Like, I mean, he was legit one of the people that I would thought was like legit. And before and this was before like I got introduced to like you know New Japan and you know the Osmo Dragons and all of them. But you know, Two Cold Scorpio was definitely that guy. He was just I don't know like it's just super. He was super athletic. He was a high fly. He was super agile. Like he was great. And then you know, Kurt Henning just charisma for days. That's <laughs> like just brash, cocky. Like hey, he was perfect. The best way to put it. Right. And uh, Sting, I mean, from Surfer Sting to Crow Sting, it's just, like, you know, when, like, people, like, you know, back then say, like, you know, he was, like, the franchise guy, like, the friend, like, the franchise in itself, like, always want to, like, aspire to be like that. I mean, from even the face pain, too, which was a phase of mine that I went through. Um, but just, you know, just, I don't know, he just captivated a crowd. I mean, Sting still does, like, he just has that, that presence that just draws you into him that just makes him 
that makes him him and, you know, makes him great from in the ring, out the ring, talking on the mic, everything. Now tell the the listeners and the and the um, watchers on the YouTube channel. Tell them what and how you got connected with uh, with your trainer, your your mentor. All right. So so you know, with every story, there's there's always like a pre like a pre log or a pre dialogue, whatever they call it. Um, so how it started for me. I'm going to go way, way back, um, kind of like Four Flats on the Cadillac. We're going to go back to about high school because this is where it, the journey kind of started. I right. hope you don't mind that. No, that's no problem. But, uh, sweet. So uh, so basically in high school, I want to say this is around my junior, like junior, end of junior year, close to senior year uh, in uh, 2008. So, yeah, that kind of shows my age. But um, around that time, you know, junior in high school, I was actually done with uh, amateur wrestling because, you know, back then, you know, in high school, you know, politics was a thing, especially when it came to amateur stuff. And I really hated my assistant coach because he was he was a work. He was something else. And that's just keeping it clean and light. But um, one of my good friends that I grew up with uh, at, uh, in the church, uh, his name is Terrence. I used to call him Coop, Coop Captain. Um, he knew a but he knew a guy that actually was running uh, wrestling shows uh, in his backyard. Uh, they was called LBOW, uh, Little Bastards of Wrestling, and um, he introduced me to him. And this was like on Facebook, and but well, it wasn't Facebook. It was actually MySpace. This is when MySpace was super heavy. Yeah, we're like, really going way back then. Thing. Oh, oh yeah, we're like, like I mean, I'm a, like time travel. Like, don't let the gimmick fool you. Like, it's actually, it's, it's we're going back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so he was like, all right. He was like, uh, I know a guy. He was like, and I know you kind of like you always talk about like you want to be like a wrestler and all that. He's like, so I know someone that kind of runs it. So um, I'll give you his MySpace page. You'll link up with him and whatnot, and I'll give you his so that you guys will just chat it up and all that. So got his MySpace information and all that, chatted with him. Um, so then he was just like, hey, so, um, you know, he's like, you're down, I'm down. You know, I I got, like, because around that time he would, he'd been wrestling for, because he started real young, because he'd been wrestling for about four years at that point. So he was like, you just come by, you know, I just tell you how things work, get your training, like, well, get you some training going on and all that fun stuff. And at that time, uh, the ring that they wrestled in <laughs> was an 8x8 eight eight ring. Believe it or not, they do make rings at small, ladies and gentlemen. That is that is not a joke. Like, usually, like, everybody's used to, like, the WWE, like, 20x20. 20 20. Like, most places have 16x16, 16 16, some have 14x14. 14 14. No, this is an 8x8 eight eight ring. So literally, like, there is... Not a whole lot of running around and all that stuff, but um, I got accustomed to it. Um, I actually took the first bump in that small ring, and then after that, that's when I came to Epiphany. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to do this for a living right? and all that. So um, did all that uh, for about close to a year, and it was actually like one of the funnest times I legit had. Um, unfortunately, the, program, the, the promotion didn't go – as long and intended as planned, you know, uh, long story short, uh, we were doing something with these guys in Chicago. They were called EWA, and uh, we was basically just, like, doing, like, a little crossover promotional feud with them and all that, basically doing, like, a little brand-to-brand -brand feud, kind of like the WCW, ECW versus WWF Alliance thing and all that fun stuff. Okay. Um, we did a show in Chicago one day uh, at a... I had a car dealership, and it was actually a really good turnout. Um, so then after that, we, like, me and the guys that came from Wisconsin and all that, because this, this is from Milwaukee to Chicago, so it's night and day. It's pretty, it's like 45 minutes drive, so it's not too bad. Uh, but we ended up leaving there because they had the truck and all that, so they were going to bring the ring back. And around this time, we upgraded. Like, with, like, two months in, we upgraded to about a – we upgraded to a 16 by 16, actually, so uh, thank God for that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, we didn't hear nothing from them for, like, the last, like, few days and things like that. And uh, decided, they decided that the EWA guys decided to keep the ring and all that and not give it back to us. And uh, at the time, you know, it was just us being a small indie promotion that we couldn't um, – 
we wasn't, you know, structurally, socially structured with, you know, money and funds and all that. Because, I mean, ah, like, we just, like, young punks and kids in high school just, you know, getting, like, using our lunch money for school and all that. And it was it was definitely not the, the best of times. And, like, definitely one of the worst of times. But um, definitely uh, that's where LBOW doors closed. And... Through that point, I jumped around through a little bit with a couple bad promotions in Wisconsin. Um, and, I mean, it gave me experience. I learned uh, what I can. I'm grateful for that. But after a while, like, because around this time, like, I've been, I was on and off at a point for about a good, maybe solid two years at this point. Um, so after that, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to just, like, try to focus on, like, college and school and whatnot. So end up doing school, uh, college at a good old uh, South Dakota State here. Um, that's a different story in itself that I'll probably talk about some other time. But um, fast forward up to about two, close to about two and a half years ago, uh, found out about uh, Midwest All Pro Wrestling down here at Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, where um, – Nick Eugene Dinsmore um, trains, and uh, the way I found out about that is uh, one of my good buddies from college, uh, his name is Eric, uh, and um, him and his good friend, his wrestling buddy, uh, Charlie uh, Charles, um, he they go to MAP shows, and one day um, Eric was like, hey, um, so there's wrestling. Uh, you want to go to this wrestling show? And me being me, I'm thinking, oh, okay, there's a wrestling show, like, in Minnesota, or there's, like, a wrestling show, like, in North Dakota, like, WWE's touring, or even in Iowa. So I was like, oh, okay, so, uh, like, how much do I can pay for gas? Like, who's already, like, I didn't know, like, they did promotions, like, WWE, like, came this close already this soon, because usually, like, I'm pretty familiar with some of their travels. But he was like, no, he's like, talking in Sioux Falls. And I was like, wait, they come into Sioux Falls again? <laughs> like, again? Because, um... Cause I was like, they're not supposed to come within the next matter of months. Cause I was uh, after the, like a little bit after their uh, SummerSlam, uh, their first tour here. He was like, no, um, there's this uh, company called Midwest All Pro Wrestling. They're uh, they do shows and whatnot. And I'm just like, wait, wait, where did like when did this happen? He's like, about like earlier in the year and stuff like that. About a year now they've been going on. Um, I'm mad that I did not know about this, but uh, yeah, you guys got me. And their first show was uh, the Gold Rush Rumble that I saw, uh, which I that was the one of the best shows actually I think I went to. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, that's non WWE. So then um, during intermission and all that, you know, I I met new Eugene, which I ain't gonna lie, at that time was a pretty big deal for me because so I was like, oh man, Eugene, this rocks. Uh, I also met uh, Aria and Sheik Davari, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Aria, yeah, it was awesome. Right. Um. And then after that, they aired this little mini, like, promo video vignette on uh, training to be a wrestler and all that. I think so... I remember seeing that online because that was a that was a pretty big deal because at, at the point, there was uh, commercials going on um, mm -hmm. on Saturdays around South Dakota here. Um, yeah. And so that, that, yeah, that was really a big thing because you're right. We never had... Um, any of these independent prom promotions around here that were in that major scale level. Exactly. Cause I mean, if you, if you, if you look at the, the indie scene here in the Midwest, like you, you're a hero of, you know, Minnesota's in the world. The, there's a lot, there's plenty in Wisconsin, you know, Chicago's a big one. Right. You got a few in North Dakota, Nebraska and Iowa's huge too. Um, like you don't hear nothing about South Dakota. Yeah. Like, I mean, which is crazy. Cause I mean, I ain't gonna lie, like, when I first went here to college, like, there's a reason why a good chunk of my family, when I told them, oh, yeah, I'm going to Brookings, South Dakota for school and whatnot, and they was like, wait, is them but trees there? Like, what's all there? And, like, which me brings me to the point of, like, I didn't believe, like, this was a thing until I saw the video. And I'm just like, oh, wow, they, like, they're actually training. It's pretty, like, this is a pretty big deal. So um, my boy Charlie Eccles, he was like, I know you're doing that, right? And I was like, "What do you mean?" He was like, "Well, uh, our boy Augie here, which we call, which is Eric again, 
Uh, he was like, well, Augie told me that you used to do this, and he showed me the photos and a couple of the YouTube videos. And I was like, well, yeah, I, I mean, I, ha I did do it. He was like, so what's stopping you from doing it now? And I was just like, well, I got to finish college a little bit. Because at that time, like, I was, like, going on my last year of college, and I was about to graduate. Right. So uh, after that, he was just like, dude, he was, he, was like, he was like, he was like, well, he's like, I know you used to do it. He was like, and I think he's like, I know you probably think probably – a little bit nervous just probably because I mean it's been because at that point I want to say it's been about maybe two years since I've like done something in a wrestling ring at that point okay so so I was just like man I mean I like I like I ain't rusty but I know like it's gonna be some work to do he was like well just do the little training camp thing that they got going on so around fast forward to about February of about that, I want to say, was it last week? No, actually about two Februarys ago, so about two years ago in February, um, is when their training camp happened. And another thing that was kind of throwing it off, too, was just for me, was just the fact that, like, I mean, me being in Brookings and the training in Sioux Falls is about a 45 minute to an hour drive, give or take. At is that, that point in time, time I that you've ever had to drive to a training facility or to a uh, school that you were going to? Um, around there, it's around there, give or take. It's it's juggling between thirty to forty five minutes at least, give or take. Um, but I know that um, one of the problems was me like actually like having a transportation at the time and trying to find a way there and back. So then, uh, what Charlie said was, he's like, "You signed up for the camp. I make sure you get away to and from there." Oh, you know, he's like, "You might have to pay for gas or have them worry about gas, but I'll find you a way. Don't worry about it. I know some people." <laughs> basically talk about the guys that are wrestling on the roster. So I was like, okay, I was like, I'll I'll commit. I'll do it. So February rolls around. Um met a lot of good people that was at the train that was at the training camp. Um uh, met a few people that are still there that are still wrestling for uh, MAP and I just remember that around after like the first day of all the stuff that was going on, like everybody like I know it's like a few people looked at me like, okay, like um this guy kind of knows a thing or two. So after, like, the first day, uh, uh, Nick Densmore came up to me. He was like, can I ask you something? Like, I don't mean to get, like, too personal or thing like that. I'm like, uh, sure. He's like, have, is this your first time doing this or have you done this before? And at that point, I was like, well, I've done it before. I'm familiar with it. And I'm familiar with, like, the fundamentals of it. It's been, like, two years, like, a couple years, two years at least, give or take. He was like, you ever thought about coming back? And I was like, um, I juggled with it. He was like, well, you're actually a lot, <laughs> you're doing it really, really good and all that. And like, you know, a good chunk of the fundamentals. So he was like, so I mean, it's just, he's like, just something I'm just, you know, just want to see if you were like curious about. And, you know, at that time, like graduation is right around the corner. So I'm not worried about a whole lot of stuff. So actually I was like, you know what? I'm going to get back into it. Why not? Like I started on something. I started on this journey a little bit ago. Might as well continue to actually see like where it goes. And I graduated, uh, first week of May in 20 in, um, 2017 fast forwarded about a week and a half later, I'm off the training and moved out to Sioux Falls and training with uh Midwest all part wrestling. <laughs> tell the, tell the viewers and the listeners, what did, what did that make? How, how did that make you feel? To have somebody at that big of a status in professional wrestling, you know, basically encouraging you to go back into professional wrestling, um, and from even though that you haven't been doing it for that long, you know, since the last time you started. Honestly, it was one of those things because um, I'm a real humble guy. Once you truly get to know me, and like I, I usually don't think that you know I ain't the I ain't the flashiest thing in the world. Like I, I, I like there has been times where I think that you know maybe I'm, I'm I'm subpar at best, and it's just like me being out that long, you know, running the ropes and like, I mean, hit, taking a bump and all that, and like me being getting familiar with it, it's just like okay, now the engines is running again. Like I'm getting that 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 high that feeling that I got since I've been, since I got it like last few years ago when I was doing it. Um, Getting someone that, you know, that trained, you know, Braun Strowman, that been in the ring with The Rock and Triple H and Ric Flair and Batista, guys trained like John Cena, like the list goes on at everybody that he trained. To hear him say that and give me that little bit of encouragement, 
that lit the biggest fire out of me that I haven't dreamt of in like a while. Like, I mean, like it was just like one of those things where it's just like, man, like, what the what like? Excuse my French, but what the hell am I doing? Like, why am I like like? Why would I like? Who would I be if I would continue this? And like, it was just something in itself, and you know, it was just de- it was definitely was words of encouragement, and it definitely definitely inspired me to have, to at least continue to pursue this dream that I'm living. Right. And now that now that you've been doing those trainings for these these couple of years, let's fast forward to now. Um, I've followed Midwest Midwest All Pro wrestling for a few years now uh been pretty vocal with the with the the faces and the heels um as you probably have uh, noticed on uh, facebook and on the uh, midwest uh, professional community page um oh, you've yeah, had no. some uh, <laughs> right uh you've you've had some tag team partners you've had some single singles matches what do you prefer tag team or singles matches <sighs> Ooh, well, mm, see, that's a tough one. See, because me, um, I like, uh, that's a tough one, because for me, you know, being, you know, somewhat of a, I ain't going to call myself a tag team revolutionary in Midwest All-Pro, but, I mean, I've, I'm familiar with, you know, being in the tag team. You know, I am a three, technically four-time uh, Harrisburger Tag Team Champions here at MAP. But honestly, I mean, it's cool to have someone that you can be in sync with, someone that you know you can you can travel up and down with, you know, make sure you like make sure everything's all right. You get there, they got their back, you got their back, because um, in you know the world of professional wrestling, they usually say that you know you gotta act like you gotta have eyes at the back of your hands, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, uh, all that fun shtick and lingo. But um, you know, tag team wrestling is pretty fun. Um. You have somebody to depend on, but I mean, at the same time as well, you know, when it comes to that, it's not a whole lot of people you can trust. Um, and you know, being single, you know, you got a chance, you know, to showcase your talent a little bit more, show that you know, hey, you know, you can that you belong in the upper echelons of you know the professional of uh, pro wrestling, I should say, and that you know you can basically hang and like you can. Do it better on your own than you can with somebody. Right. So it's it's one of those toss ups. Like I I can't physically choose because I mean, I mean it's just me being a, a wrestling fan too. Like I love tag team. I love tag team wrestling. No. Like I mean from the Hardy Hardy Boys, the uh, Dougley Boys, Edge and Christian. Right. Heck the Nasty Boys. Heck I even like Mean Street Posse at a point in time. <laughs> right. But you know like I I love that aspect of tag team like continuity and all that. But I mean one-on-one single competition is where it's at too like all parts of wrestling is great and it's, it's hard it's legit hard for me to choose well you, but you if i had say... to go into them, I'll, I'll, I'll say singles like a little bit maybe okay. by, by, so like, you have the singles that you'd like you, you prefer better because i was just gonna ask you you know watching you and you being in your tag team uh the the, the tag teams that you've been in and then you've been you know technically four-time harrisburger tag team champion in midwest all pro um you you did put out a good point. You have to have that trust factor. Now your last two tag team partners seem to not have that trust factor. Can you maybe go in a little more in depth than that? Uh, maybe why or uh, what could it have been? Because it seems like you get these tag team partners that you know are really good. You, you guys work together. You mesh great, and then all of a sudden they they turn on you. Uh, the best way I can explain this is. Uh, my side of the story because everybody has like you know their reasons for it probably people in it but i guess i can explain it so the first partner i had was uh his name was crash known as you know the world war stuntman now at that time uh we were there were we were uh map i should say were bring, was bringing in the tag team division to crown the first ever tag team champions and around November two years ago, actually, actually close to close to the date, actually two years ago, um, Crash got beat up by a few people, and I came up to save him because he was just sitting there looking for a tag team partner. So I just asked him at that point in time because he needed me. That I was like, if you need like any favors or anything, just let me know. And at that time, you know, I'm not doing anything. Like I just technically broke in through the doors of MAP, you know, just trying to make a name for myself. 
Right. Um, so he asked me flat out, uh, I'm looking for a tag team partner uh, for the tournament, and there's one slot left. Uh, are you Are you down? And me seeing opportunity at the time, uh, you know, I took it. And, you know, fast forward it, me and Crash win the tournament, and we became the first ever Harrisburg Tag Team Champions. Now, down the road, um, while we were trying to reclaim the titles that we lost, um, at a certain event I wasn't at, Crash ended up seriously hurting himself and getting a very severe concussion. And, you know, with as serious as concussion is nowadays, um, forced him to basically at that time kind of semi-retire. Right. Um, so at that point, you know, I, you know, I respect the crash wishes and everything like that. So, you know, I told him, he said, you know, he always he'd be there to support me at the events and whatnot, which I was very grateful and humble for. Uh, cause you know, we never, he said he never forget the time crashes and what happened to his career, how, how much it elevated him and how much, you know, I helped push him and, you know, cause he helped push me. Um, so then around the time, uh, around, uh, May of, uh, actually like late May, early June of last year, uh, there was a, another opportunity that came up to, for me to reclaim the Harrisburg Tag Team Champions chips. And, um, uh, it was a three-way, uh, tag match. And, uh, basically I was just told by management, um, if you can, uh, try to find yourself a tag team partner. And... At that time, I was I couldn't see myself with anyone because I mean, Crash was my boy at the time. Like I mean, my loyalty was there. So Crash introduced me to Freak Nasty. He's just say, you know, he wants he wants the same opportunity that uh, that me and you talked about, you know, months ago. So uh, let's, you know, just just give it just give it a shot, give it a chance. And it's crazy that all this intertwines with each other with this story. Um, because after, like, literally that night, me and Freak won the tag team titles. Okay. Now, like, a month later, there's a four-way tag match at uh, uh, Matt Mania 2. And uh, during the time, you know, I know Crash was legit going through some things. And I can't even explain what he was going through. Because, I mean, granted, he just graduated high school. That shows his end, by the way. Right. Um. So he 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 was definitely going through a phase. So during the match, uh, you know, as I was getting ready to do a really cool dive, Crash got on the apron, you know, and he kind of distracted me, and I lost the belts to me. I lost the belts for Freak and I. Now me and Crash was getting into it. Freak was in the middle of it, and you know, I guess. I send out the wrong signal in a way because, you know, he shook free can. They was cool. He wanted me to shake my hand, and I I was re- I, he- I hesitated on it because, you know, I was I was frustrated. You know, you lose a title that you just won, you know, you're going to be you're going to be pretty mad. Right. And Crash took it upon himself to give me the good old low blow and just proceeded to stomp the daylights out of me and beat up Freak as well. So... It was one of those things where jealousy kicked in in effect because he felt as though he was an athlete. That, you know, he, he like, since I got the belts with, one of the belts with fruit, that he's going to be just tossed on the wayside and that um, he's going to be forgotten about. So he just took matters into his own hands. So that's where that happened with Crash. Right. Now, over the course of time, you know, I got my come up hits with Crash. And, you know, Freak was there to help me out, too, so I guess I can thank Freak for that. Um, and not a whole lot of thanking. But after that, now we, then we just tried to go and uh, we claimed the belts that we lost. Um, few series, few awesome matches with uh, Team Awesome, which is Brandon Nitro and Ronnie Brown. Uh, classic matches, but, you know, there was never a decisive winner out of those matches. Uh, first match we had went to a 30-minute time limit. Second match was two out of three falls, which never got decided due to the part of a couple of teams coming out and just ruining a cl- another five star classic match. Um, so then um, after that, um, things got involved. So we just have some four away, and um, we 
we got our belts back. Uh, and to wind it up, which was the shot of me being technically a four-time tag team champion around that time. Right. But uh, it was shot because uh, the management said that the referee got taken out. It should have been a DQ, so they had to give the belts back to them, which was a little yes, I should say myself. But, you know, it's mad. They run a face. You know, I just got to buy by it. So then later on that night, I proposed that there's a gauntlet to decide it all. Now, usually when it comes to gauntlets and matches and how it works is that you usually um, you randomly get drawn numbers and, you know, that's your order. So back there, me and Freak was talking because we were, we were mad that, you know, that happened earlier that night. So I decided that, you know what? Let's prove that we're actually the best. Let's start it off. But don't you want to rather be last? And this was freak words. Don't you want to just go out and be last? I was like, dude, we're better than this. Like, we can beat any team, and I know we can. So we're going first. We're not drawing. Just line them up and we'll knock them down, which is what we did. We lined them up and knocked them down. But apparently I wasn't told that there was another team involved after beating the champs. Because you think usually the last team you face will be the tag team champions, right? So we beat, so we beat Team Awesome. Match is over, you know. Hey, we got the belts. We're celebrating, and then you know, uh, Miss Stephanie Dinsmore says, "You guys uh, technically have one team left," and we get blindsided and we lose to the 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 sick pup. Uh, no, not sick puppies. The Wolf Pack. No, not the Wolf Pack. I might get in trouble with that. There it is. Um, we lose to them. Now. Trying to get our belts back with Team Awesome. Because now, now we got ourselves a little uh, bilingual blood fest going on here. Right. Uh, so after uh, an eight-man tag that involved us, um, Freak, uh, there's a little miscue. And Freak got upset about it. Um, and, you know, around that time, you know, just thought, you know what? I screwed up on something. It's It's on me. But come to find out, going on towards it, like a few weeks down the road, I'm just trying to get in contact with Freak, uh, see what's going on, what happened, like, can we, like, meet up at our usual spot, you know, just chill, just talk about it, just hash it out, because there is a lot of beef animosity going on. Right. So, yeah, and for, like, the last, like, few weeks, he ignored my, ignored my text message. He ignored everything. So... I mean, I'm just like, okay, bro, like, I don't know what the deal is. So, around the time Matt Mania 3 happens, Matt Man- the first day of Matt Mania series happens, um, Freak wasn't there. I get word that there's a, a tag team battle warrior where the winners get a shot at the tag team titles uh, following the second event of the Matt Mania series in July. Right. So I was like, okay, cool. All right. So Freak probably put us in, you know, just say, you know, water under bridge us over it. Let's go get our belts back. Come to find out that when I, you know, find out, you know, who all's there, who's all in the match and everything like that, they had Freak teaming up with Damian Dark, and they had me teaming up with uh, Austin Schmidt. So Which had to off, like, off, cause a little more animosity between you and Freak. Exactly, exactly. So I'm like, I'm even more confused than I was before. So I'm just like, wait a minute, like, what's the point of you having? a tag team battle world match and not have the former tag team champions like I thought we was cool. I thought everything was just like I thought everything was square, you know, like a box. But um come to find out that, you know, I can like freak was avoiding me and things like that during the match. And uh even after the match he took me out and all that. Um so like to get me eliminated, things like that. So come to find out that I see a little video that he puts up explaining on what, what, why he did what he did. Some people consider it, considered what he said, uh, double cross, 
because also too I forgot to mention that um, later on that night, like uh, in May, before the tag team battle royal, there was a battle royal for the number one contendership for the Empire Auto Cell Undisputed Championship. Freak threw me out of that match. So at that time, I wasn't mad because honestly, it's a battle royal. I would have did the exact same thing to get a title shot opportunity. So come to find out that Freak came off a little video and he basically explained everything. Basically, he said he used he used me as an opportunity to get eyes on him. That he used me as basically a scapegoat to get him, you know, views or get eyes on him, get people to take him seriously. Because at a point in time, no one practically remember, no one took Freak Nasty seriously. But he saw with the kind of guy that I am that, you know, what I've done so far in my few, in my, at that time, year, going, year in MAP, what I can do and how I can help him out. You know, you team with one of the first ever tag team champions, you know, you're, you're, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying like I'm a big deal, but it'll get some eyes on you. You'll get noticed. You'll get a rocket on your back. You'll get launched to the moon. So he just said he just saw it. He saw it as a business opportunity, as a business investment. And that, and, you know, at that point, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't have took it as seriously as I wanted to because you know what hey at the end of the day you know wrestling you know this wrestling business is actually a business so i was just like okay you know that's that's fine like you just use me as an opportunity you know I, it's it's okay i'll get over it now but what he proceeded not what he proceeded to say after that i don't mean to cut you off no no I, I, say you're, after, you're you're covering what i was just gonna ask you so go ahead mm -hmm. so what he proceeded to say after that is what really grind my gears because he said every time which which furthers the point of how much he was in it for himself was that he got annoyed at the fact that every time you know me and him came out to do a match all he heard was let's go D-Lo or DLC DLC because you know one of the famous word, three letter words in this in MAP is not RKO, even though RKO is the most deadliest thing ever. It's the Dorian's lethal color. It's the DLC. Right. Now, he got annoyed of the fact that I'm a, I guess in that I was more popular loved and he was that everyone sees me as someone that they can get behind and they look at Freak Nasty as I don't know, like maybe like a reject version of a Pump Master Flex mixed with a Big Daddy Kane reject. But I mean, my thing is, is that he got annoyed off of that and he let that bother him. Right. To where it changed his whole aspect, his whole demeanor of everything. And like the thing is, when it comes to with tag team wrestling, like traveling the road together, sharing stuff with. There are stories that get told. There's things, bonds that get forged, and everything like that. But my thing was, you willing to throw away all that hard work, all that sacrifice that we did, just because everyone, the fans, got behind me more. The fans showed me a little more compassion. That when they hear DLC, that that just grinded your gears, and you thought they didn't give you the respect. They chanted your name, Freak Nasty, on more than one occasion. They, right. It wasn't just me. Freaking Future wasn't just about me. It was also about, it was a two-way street. But in his little twisted little fantasy world of his, he just thought that I was just being a one-man gang and just showing her, showing her all the fame, the fortune myself that I was getting when it came to, the, to this tag team. So he proceeded to call saying that DLC was not, that just stand for, how much of a stupid dancer that I was, how much a loser that I am, and how much of a chump I am because, you know, guy like me, I like anime. I love nostalgia. I'm that much of an outgoing guy. And he's just saying that I'm the type of person that would never make it into this business. Right. And so, it, it, it yeah. seemed like in uh, August 
uh, I would say, if I remember right, if I had my research correctly, Friday, August 16th, you had your Super uh, Summer Sizzler series of Matt Mania at the Icon Lounge in, uh, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And it seemed like when you tagged with Giggles, another MAP uh, superstar, uh, Freak Nasty tagged with uh, the Prince Ali, uh, another superstar for Midwest All Pro Wrestling. It seemed like at that point, at that tag team, it seemed like this animosity really boiled over at that at that point um could you go into a little more detail about that match because i know that they ended up getting disqualified yep i can definitely do that for you so basically how it worked was um i had nothing to do that night so giggles um had his little ongoing situation going on with ali because you know he they he wanted him ali, ali to have fun, right. whatever that means. And uh, he wanted them to become tag team champions. Yeah, because it's all about fun. Because, I mean, that's what clowns do, unless your name's not Pennywise. Um, not Pennywise fun. wants you to flip. Oh, that's not fun at all. Not at all. Um, so, Giggles approached me and asked, he said, I need, a, fa I need a, a question and a favor for me. And I just said, sure, what's up? He was like, well, um, I got us, I got a match tonight. Um, but I'm looking for a partner. So already I cut him off and I said, is it Ali and Giggles? I mean, not Ali and Giggles. Is it Ali and Freak teaming together? And you want me to be your partner? He said, yeah. He's like, I just want to talk to Ali just to be his friend again. And I just want to make sure that we're okay. So I, I can say that on this part, I kind of use Giggles to get to Freak just so that I can in hindsight, do the same thing that he wants to do. Just at least let bygones be bygones and just make sure he takes everything back what he said. But if not, a part of me really wanted to punch him in the mouth for all the disrespect that, you know, he gave me. So the match happens, everything goes on. And, you know, throughout the whole match, you know, Freak was avoiding me. Um... Until, like, I got ganged up and beat up on, you know, that's when Freak came in and he laid in a few shots on me. So, going on to the match, I knew everything was thrown out the window. Because that wasn't the Freak Nasty that I teamed up with. That definitely was someone completely different. Someone that I thought I knew. So, you know, the match is going on, you know, chaos happens. We ended, we won the match by DQ. Um, you know, from Ali, you know, pushing the referee down, you know, getting himself disqualified. Um, and then after that, they just proceeded to beat the Evan Living Tar out of us. And um, I vaguely remembered him telling me this, but watching the video back, you know, Freak said, I've been wanting to do this for you for a long time. I've been holding this back for a long time. You deserve this for a long time. And, you know, he dropped me on my head. And, you know, coming to after all that beatdown happened, I, I just remembered him saying that. And all I get to see now is that when people talk about, you know, the team of freaking future is that he had so much animosity towards me and so much hatred towards me for a long, long time that he just did it out of spite. And he just, in his eyes, think he was being vengeful for what he did, but truth be told, he wasn't. So... I, at this, at that point, you know, that's that's where the gloves is coming off. And at that point, it's just like, you know, I I can take being poked at. I can take being making fun of because, you know, in the world we live in, people always got to hate. People always got to make fun of me. But when you question my hard work and my ethic and what I bring to the table and when you just throw that out to the waistline, that's where – that's where things get real. That's when things get serious. That's why I definitely got to take the gloves off. And that's when I start to start fighting for myself. Right. With uh, with Supercon coming up, which is September 27th at uh, Supermania, do you want to continue this? Or are you going to try to go your separate way and try the singles route? You know, um, that's actually a good question. Um, I'm glad you asked that. Um, I'm going to answer that by saying, honestly, I got to end this. This this has been going on for way too long. Because the thing is, which is why, uh, why, why my closure with Crash didn't go the way it did, 
is because I've never actually had my comeuppance with Crash. I never got my chance to actually beat the crap out of Crash more than I wanted to, you know, and not just with something happening in the way and he was just there. So I got my hands on him for a tiny bit. I want to make him suffer for all the name calling that he did and everything like that. I didn't get the chance to do that with Crash because Crash just was disappeared and is nowhere to be found now. Um, but you know, hey, there's there's actually one time where he just hit me up on social media like months ago, and I don't know. I think he might have changed a little bit. I think he was going through a phase. But <laughs> with Freak, um, it got to end because you know, at a point in time, you know, I was thinking of going the singles route and maybe getting my hands on at least attempting to be in the the, the qualifying ladder match where the winner gets uh, Money Bank style ladder match where the winner gets an opportunity at the MAP title anytime he wants for over the year. But my thing was is just that, you know, with if I try to do that, what what goes to show that Freak Nasty is going to come out and cost me that opportunity? Anything that I do, whether it's from that to the Empire Auto Sales Undisputed title or just any match in particular that I have, like how how quick it will it take for Freak Nasty to come out and cost me something that I feel as though I I rightfully deserve, I rightfully earn, that I can do something to where I, I fight, I fight, and I, and I try to win the match, but Freak says something otherwise, and he just wants me to lose and suffer and don't get the success and don't be that afterthought, like I said earlier. So the only way I can get for sure closure and at least get a start, a good head start on my way for being actually getting my singles run um, in Midwest All Pro is to end this thing with Freak Nasty once and for all. This 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 is this has been going on for a little bit. A, I, I say a little bit too long, even though it's only been like a couple months. But some people might think it's short. Some people might think it's long. I just got to end this with Freak. I got to get my hands on him. I just got to I I just got I just got to squash this. I got to end this my way. And right. I think the only way for me to do it is at Supermania. Right. Well, you you heard it you heard it here first, folks. Uh Supermania coming up September 27th at the Convention Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, if I'm correct. Correct. Uh where could they get tickets if they want to see this? special event, this extraordinary event. You guys can if you got uh, you guys can get tickets at uh supercon.com if I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, the link will probably be most likely be in the description in the box. You go to supercon.com, uh you'll go there and get the tickets or you can get the tickets the day of the event. Just show up at the door. Um it's going to be a it's going to be one hell of a show if I can say so myself. Right. I, you know what, uh, Mr. Diggs, I, I appreciate you being on the show. I wish you the best of luck, uh, with your situation that with freak nasty, uh, I, I hope that you're in the, the ladder match to get a possible chance at the, uh, heavyweight championship of Midwest all pro. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank our sponsors, which is Midwest all pro wrestling. Uh, and also BTC uncut live wouldn't be what it is without the power of kback.rocks kback.rocks your rock radio the way rock should be mr delorean thank you for coming and i hope everybody else has a good night see you everybody leon, hating because you want shining like it's leon rock like kings of leon shooting stars across the galaxy i stand out so don't be mad at me infiltrate your Yeah, 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 shoot, 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 shoot